the name of the living God, who is Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit. I've got a good feeling about St. James in 2018. Lively fellowship, strong worship, active ministries, meaningful formation, construction underway, and on March 17th, a celebration of the ministry shared by the rector and the people of St. James for the past five years. It's going to be a good year. I'm not as excited about our nation in 2018. High levels of anxiety and anger, conflict and confusion, fear, mistrust, and dysfunction. And who knows how it will all end. But here's the good news. If there is trial and distress in one part of our lives, what we need to do and what we can do is to remember and return to the other parts of our lives, especially that part where God dwells, where God meets us with love and acceptance, encouragement and joy, to find that the rock to stand on, to find that the safe place, that the place where we are energized and enlightened and led from. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. That's what Jesus' vision is for all of humanity. In trying times, people of faith have always throughout the ages, turn to God. In regular times, people of faith have turned to God. And the trick is, the key is to discover our own unique way of experiencing God, of being transformed by God, of being at one with God. Just as each of, one of, each of us is an individual, we have individual ways of, of being with God at that deep, deep place. Sometimes we need help from an experienced listener to teach us how to hear the voice of God. That's the story of Samuel, which you just heard. Samuel's mother was Hannah. Hannah was old and childless, and she went to the temple day after the day begging God to give her children, especially a son. And she made this promise to God. If, if God gave her a son, she would dedicate that son to God and to serve the priest in the temple. And Samuel was born. And when he was old enough, that's exactly what Hannah did. She took Samuel to the temple, to live, to be a part of that ministry as a little boy. And so one night, as you heard, one night he heard, Samuel heard someone calling him, Samuel, Samuel. So he went to Eli, the priest that was there, and he said, it's, I wasn't calling you. Go back to bed. Second time, Samuel, Samuel. That wasn't me calling you. A third time. This time Eli, the wise one, knew what was going on, and he told Samuel, <coughs> Go back and go to bed, and the next time you hear your name called, say, speak, for your servant is listening. And that's what he did. Samuel needed somebody else, somebody older and more experienced, to help him learn and discern what God's voice sounded like and how God might be speaking to him. It's called discernment. And hopefully here in this parish in a couple of months, we'll have discernment groups, groups in which made up of four or five parishioners who have been trained to be discerners, to sit with the other parishioner who might have an issue of faith or a challenge in life or a decision to make about what to do with the future of their lives and, 
And these discerners will be trained to help that person listen to God's voice and say yes. Sometimes we need help in discernment. Sometimes our hearts are struck with awe and wonder at the greatness of God. Like that Psalm 139. One of the most powerful psalms in all of the Psalter. It's really a praise psalm. I mean, you could, you could hear trumpets blowing. I mean, it's so amazing. It's so amazing that, that God says, Lord, you have, that the psalmist says, Lord, you have stretched me out and known me, searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. I mean, it goes on and on. And are you kidding me? God, God, you know more about me than I know about myself. And it thrills me. That's what the psalm is all about. The joy at being known completely by God. Just awe and wonder, what awe and wonder at the greatness of God. And last fall, a lot of us, when we're especially during the season of creation, a lot of us sort of identified with creation being an instrument, a means by which we were impressed with the greatness of God through animals, or mountains, or <coughs> waterfalls, or blades of grass growing through a sidewalk. I mean, lots of different ways in, in creation we, we can see and we can believe in the greatness of God. And sometimes we are captured by the mystery of a statement of faith. I mean, a lot of wise things have been said about the faith throughout the centuries. And one of them is what St. Paul said to the Corinthians. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? I mean, think about that. St. Paul is saying to all of us is that God's Holy Spirit really is dwelling within our bodies. I mean, that's not something we think about a whole lot, I don't think. But, but that is Christianity. And when we believe that God's Holy Spirit is dwelling within our bodies, we have a whole different opinion about how we treat our bodies. But it's not just how we treat our bodies, it's about our relationship with God. So God is in my body? That's amazing. I just announced earlier about this book that we're going to be studying, The Heart of Christianity. And, in, and it's written by Marcus Borg, and he focuses on two things, as I said earlier. He focuses on the passion of the faith. Like, how can we be amazed about uh, lots of statements, lots of truths about Jesus or about our faith? And also, how can we really think about things as 21st century people so that it makes sense? And both are true. Christianity does make sense, and Christianity is a religion of the heart. I really encourage all of you to consider being a part of the heart of Christianity study for the next three months. Because in this day and age, when we are faced with so many challenges, it's important to know where our heart is for us to be connected to God by our hearts. And it's important for us to be really honest about, we, about what we believe and the truth of our faith. So come join one of our learning groups. A fourth way, a fourth way that we open up ourselves to experience God as individuals and to be transformed by God is we say yes to an invitation. That's what the gospel reading was about. Jesus said to Philip, Follow me. That's all he said. No statement of faith. No, let me explain things to you, Philip. He simply said, follow me. <coughs> the implication, of course, was do what I do. Walk where I walk. Relate to people like I do. In other words, learn the faith, Jesus is saying to Philip, by the way I live my life. Follow me. And Philip did. Then Philip says to Nathaniel, let me tell you who I found. And there's some questions, but 
Philip says to Nathaniel, come and see. Again, no, no huge statement of explanation, but simply come and see what Jesus is doing. Come and see how he relates to people. Come and see how he deals with conflict. Come and see how he prays to God the Father. Come and see. Well, those invitations are also made to us, actually every day of our lives. Follow me. We have a choice to do that or not. But that's how we learn our faith, is to follow Jesus. And so over these next few months, I'm going to encourage you to participate in practices of faith, some specific practices of faith as a means of following Jesus. Some things that Jesus challenged us to do, namely, to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And here's how you can love God, you can practice this, and that is set aside, I, we've talked about this before, but set aside 15 minutes, just 15 minutes, you can do it, 15 minutes every day to be silent in prayer with God. That's one way you can love God, just 15 minutes of sacred silence and see how God might talk with you. Love God. Love your neighbor. Every day, just one practice or act or thought of compassion for someone who is a neighbor or a friend, or a stranger, or a fellow parishioner, some, some other person, just one act of compassion because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Love God, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that third part, treat yourself the same way. Sometimes we feel good about ourselves, sometimes we don't. But every day for the next three months, do reach out to yourself. Have compassion for yourself, either in a thought or an action. For God's Holy Spirit does dwell within you. Don't let the very real and dangerous challenges of this time poison or wound your heart. Don't go there. Instead, turn to God. Focus on strengthening your faith as a Christian. And it is a fact, the more secure we are in our own faith as a follower of Jesus Christ, the more comfortable we are, the more empowered we are to deal with all kinds of challenges in our lives, in our families, in our communities, and yes, in this nation. For God loves everybody. People who cause problems and people who solve problems. People on this side and people on that side. And one of the responsibilities of us as followers of Jesus Christ is that some way we too can love all types of people. For they all, we all, are children of God. Amen. <laughs>